Continue to pray with us and for us as we continue on the pathway to which God has called us. Amen. Amen. I want to continue the reading we began this morning from 2 Corinthians chapter 12. We stopped at verse 6, we read. So we're going to pick up at verse 7, 8, 9. And 10. 2 Corinthians, the 12th chapter. Verses 7, 8, 9, and 10. If you haven't saved, man, amen. Amen. if your neighbor's still looking for it, help him. The King James, you're going to have to pray with me as we have little voice left, but I'm going to give what I have. Amen. Amen. Second Corinthians, 12th chapter, verses 7 through 10. Amen. Amen. King James Version of the Bible reads thusly, Unless I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of revelations, there was given to me a thorn in the flesh. Though I not be lifted up too much through the abundance of revelation, there was given to me a thorn in the flesh. Come, which means continue, the messenger of Satan to buffet me. Come. Lest I be exalted. Above measure. Amen. Amen. For this thing. This thing. Huh. I besought the Lord. Yes. Yeah. Thrice. Yeah. That I might. It might depart from me. Yes. And the Lord. Yeah. said unto me, my grace yeah. is yeah. present tense right now sufficient yeah. for thee. Yeah. For my strength uh-huh. I need this one yeah. is made perfect yeah. in weakness. Yeah. Most gladly therefore will I rather glory in my infirmity that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Yeah. I close with this verse. Therefore, Therefore. Therefore. most of y'all don't want to read this verse. Therefore, hmm. I take pleasure ah, yes, sir. in infirmity. I take pleasure yes, yes. in reproaches. Yeah. I take pleasure in necessity. I take pleasure in persecution. I take pleasure in distress. Why? For Christ's sake. For when I am weak. For when I am weak. Then. Then. Am I strong. God our Father. Thank you for your word. For we stand to declare. The grass wither, the flower fade, but the word of God is everlasting and eternal. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. I'm going to give you the tag for this, but you should have picked up on it. Still staying in the vein of chaos. I want to talk about this morning the chaos of the thorn. Oh, Somebody ought to say man. Yeah. The chaos yes. of the thorn. When, when the Bible shows up 
And the Bible tells you to take pleasure in infirmities. That's chaos. When the Bible shows up and says take pleasure in reproaches, that's chaos. When the Bible shows up and say take pleasure when you're in need for the common mind, that's chaos. Yeah. Yeah. Not many of you come skipping in the church talking about I ain't got nothing to eat. I'm so happy. All my bills is due. And I'm so happy. But the Bible says take pleasure in that. That's chaos, Doc. Then the Bible says, when you're persecuted, both folks know what I'm talking about. It says, take pleasure. It says, when you're in distress, when all the people you've helped, Sister McCree, refuse to help you, this Bible has the nerve to show up in the midst of your distress, it told you to be happy. Be happy. Like Bobby McFerrin is skipping through here. Don't worry. It just don't make sense. The chaos that these thorns bring to us, they don't make sense. Living in a substandard life while folk who don't even go to church are living in black hole. It just don't make sense. And this Bible shows up with the unmitigated gall, the gastro guts to tell you to be happy that your children don't have what children who don't even serve God have. And the Bible says, take pleasure. I stand this morning to invite all of you into what this calls me to have my therapy session. Because it just didn't make sense to me. So I, I'm inviting you to come to therapy with me today. Maybe you need therapy to understand how this chaotic statement from the Bible told you to be happy with it. Children rebelling against parents and they telling you be happy. So I would be in court. I'd be incarcerated. But the Bible says, be happy. I, I, I need help, Paul. Yes. Chaos, a state of utter, complete confusion and disorder, a total lack of organization, yes. and that drives me bonkers. Yes. I lost my mind over the last month trying to put this event on because I couldn't run it the way I wanted and God was training me to shut up. Oh, you better come on. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Training me to be quiet because you ain't the smartest person in the room. And when you are, change rooms so somebody can educate you. You better come on. Yes, sir. Chaos and order of confusion, a disorderly mass or what they say where Sister Hodge is from in North Carolina, just a hot mess. And God tells me, be happy in a mess. The thorn, the word in the Greek is scopus, and it's a pointed piece of wood that is made to pierce whatever comes close to it. It's made for that purpose. It, 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 it is created for that purpose. It is created to inflict pain and bring about suffering. And somehow, Paul's trying to take me to therapy counseling session and tell me, don't worry. Be happy. But today I have a greater understanding of this Paulian text. Uh, coming to these Sunday worships these meetings, people expect everything yes, to be wonderful. Wow. Yeah. Church attendance steadily moving in an upward climb. The doors still hinged open, fans still turning. And, uh, the pandemic seeming to not be so consuming as it once was. Right. People still employed. Somebody ought to say amen. Yeah. Yeah. New cars have been purchased. Say amen. 
New suits have been fitted. Same man. New dresses have been ordered. Same man. New weeds have been purchased. Same man. New haircuts have been cut. Same man. <laughs> but somewhere after church when nobody is following me around and I'm on my way home and the real issue that I parked at the back door they need me the weight of the world shows back up you ain't here to say amen yes sir can I suggest that in your life, during the course of your W-E-E-K, there will be occurrences that will make you W-E-A-K. If you're in here with you, you can at least say amen. If you got to the place that, that, that you didn't know how I'm going to get out of this. I don't even know how I got into this. Amen. Church over. Yeah. <laughs> Problems are mounting up. Yes, yes. Don't go away. <laughs> There's so much pain and suffering. They're still putting new roles and names on the hospice care. Yeah, yeah. The beloved deacon from, from Calvary, his yeah. name is now on the hospice wow. care. Somebody's name is on a transplant list. Yeah. Somebody's name is on a court document. Yeah. Am I clear? Oh, yeah. Somebody's name is in bankruptcy court. Yeah. Somebody's car is being moved by the repo man. Yeah. 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 PGE is searching for somebody's house right now. Uh -huh. Shut up the <laughs> If somebody's going through all this heartache, with nobody to tell. Somebody's laying in a cold bed with nobody to tell. Somebody's laying in a bed with somebody that don't even care to hear what you got to say. All of this is going on. And the church is playing the organ. They're beating the drums. And everything for about an hour seems like it's all right. But who's going to meet me? After church. Yeah. Who's going to get in the car with me and my gas light is flashing? Yeah. Who's going to be there for me when I began to realize that I'm on the way home and there's nothing in the pot cooking? Yeah. Who's going to be there with me and I'm on the way home with a heartbreak? Because yeah. my children are still acting the complete yeah. fool. Yeah. And you sit here this morning must bring up that external smile. Because I don't want people to know that I'm suffering. The pain, the sorrow, the sickness. Even after an excellent week of revival, I was blessed to hear Bishop Bolton from Mississippi. He ministered to my heart on third, telling me that the same substance that's on the table can be found in some crumb. Helping me to understand that every once in a while, I ain't got to get to the table. If I can crawl to the crumb. Y'all miss what I say. Y'all, you, you be a little bit okay if you understand that what's in the crumbs is the same thing that they had at the table. I wouldn't be so angry and disappointed. Yeah. And then he didn't leave me there. He showed up the next day talking about the fragments. Talking about disciples that don't want to disciple. But he said that the good thing about it is they were in a desert place, yeah. the Bible said. Yeah, yeah. But the Lord told them to sit down in the grass. Yeah. Every once in a while, I want you to know that when you think you're in the desert, yeah. if you can get down to where the crumbs at, God got some grass growing. Yeah. Somebody ought to say, I got grass growing yeah. in my desert. Yeah. Yes, sir. Amen. I find myself even with a nice blue suit on yeah. and a nice tie to back, yeah. experiencing chaos. Yeah. You can't dress chaos up enough that it don't make you crazy. Yeah. Amen, somebody. Well, child of God, I know 
you don't want to hear this, but there are some situations there are. in your life yeah, yeah. you better learn to live with because yeah. God's not going to let you die from them. Right. Right. Amen. 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 There are some circumstances that you got to learn to live with. Yeah. I got to learn to live with some grown children yeah. that make immature decisions and oh. won't be the cover. I hear you. I hear you. Y'all mad at me. Y'all mad at me. But I'm trying to help you to get to the chaos yeah, yeah. in the thorn. Because yeah. if you pull it out, you just make a hole and keep bleeding. Oh, ah, you better show up. Yes, sir. But praise God, he's not going to let me die from these circumstances. Yeah. Somebody ought to thank God he's not going to let you die in those circumstances. And somebody's going to get delivered. God's not even going to let you die with those circumstances. Am I clear anywhere in this room? I, I, I showed up with a doctrinal duty to tell you there are some requests that were made to God. And in an emphatic way, he said, no. Yeah, he will say no. <laughs> God told me to tell you some of the stuff you keep asking for him. the reason it didn't show up because he said nothing. The, 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 this is where we meet Paul after he places pen to parchment paper and makes a final defense to all of the people of God that he is a true apostle of God. He has been to places most folk will never get to. He's been to the third heaven and he comes down and God let him know that I took you up so I can send you back down. Y'all yeah. missed it. He brings us up on Sunday so he can send you down to work on Monday. Y'all yeah. yeah, play too much. But you just want to stay up here. You want the Peter experience. That when you're on the mountaintop, I, uh, it's good for us to be up in here. But us got to leave here and go to work. Come in to worship, but leave here to work. When I got to prop you up, beg you to go and tell over 500 folk at a block party that Jesus is the way you've been on the hill too long. Yes, Two words about is the chicken done. Yes. Oh. Is it any mail to go on them burgers? <laughs> God didn't drop us off here to make hamburgers. He dropped us off here to make disciples. Yes, When we gather around the grill, instead of taking care of the sheep, yeah. we too busy cooking them and cleaning them to help correct them. Amen. I didn't come to play with y'all this morning. It's time that we change. Yeah. Gotta beg folk to get help. And God is standing there saying, come unto me, yes, all you that labor. We get back to Paul because he won't get mad at it. Paul has been in a place that nobody will go until John gets to go on the Isle of Patmos. He's up in a place that God has taken. And God brings Paul up there. And, and, and there are some things that he does for Paul while he's there. And I'm not going to get into that. I'll save that for another day because I got enough meat here. And I hope you gather around this grill like we did oh, yeah. the grill yesterday. And I took pictures of y'all. <laughs> I got evidence and proof that some did more eating than preaching. <laughs> See, I understand some folks have to be separated from it. And, and see, this part is not the easy part. No. Because I know you all love me. Yeah. And I love you. Amen. But you can't die and redeem my soul. That's right. And I can't die and redeem your soul. Yeah. I have to stand and tell you what thus saith the Lord. Yeah. He who knew no sin became sin so we could become sons and daughters. Yeah. So I can't stand up here and play around and, and say cute stuff for you so you leave in my path and go in a good job. No, if you leave here the way you came, baby, I miss the mark. Yeah. 
So, so here it is. Paul says something that, and here's the first point. I'm going to waste somewhere. Paul says, there was given to me a thorn in the flesh, the messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I be exalted above measure. The first point I have for you is my thorn is an extreme situation. My thorn, listen to me, it's an extreme. Say it when we say extreme. Y'all yeah. won't even say it, but I, I know it to be true. That thorn is an extreme yeah. situation, yeah. an extreme circumstance, an extreme scenario yeah. comes from that thorn. That thorn brings the greatest uncomfort to all of us. Yeah. Yeah. All of you have a thorn. Sure. You can sit up here and play with me if you want to, but if you got a piece of paper, don't let your neighbor see it coming up because they know it and write down your thorn. Because then you can get some hope and God will give you some help. We all got some thorns. Yeah. But we got that one thorn. That thing that, oh my God. Yes, sir. Yeah. Oh, Lord. Oh. And you better see your thorn today. The whole message does no good if you don't see your thorn. Amen. If you don't see your thorn right now. And if you don't know it, I give you two seconds to ask God. That's how quickly he'll give it to you. Lord, what's my thorn? Lord. Got it. Yes, sir. Got it. Got it. And, 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 and the reason it is extreme is because it was an illogical present. Wow. An illogical present brought about extreme pain. And it was a present. I know it was. Watch what your Bible said. There was given to me. Uh, you better come on. Is that what your Bible says? Yeah. There was given to me. Uh, say it with me. There was given to me a thorn. It's a present. Wow. And Deacon Hart, you know who said it? God did. <laughs> That's illogical. Why would God who loved me send me a thorn? The first problem is it is a gift. Next is where it comes from. The text says it was given to me. That word in the original language is didomy. In the Greek, it means granted or permitted. Now, how in the world does a God-given gift cause me pain? Anybody got children, raise your hand. You know what I just said. You know what I just said. And if you're married, put up the other hand. Because sometimes that gift will give you some pain. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. Amen, somebody. Amen. God gave it, but grief came with it. Amen. Watch this. I, I've not been preaching a pastor long enough to understand, but maybe one of you can help me out. If not, we'll rely on Paul. Why would God consent to something like this? Lord, you see me struggling already. Then you give me the opportunity to come to this high place and leave with a thorn? Somebody know what I'm saying. You come to church and leave sad. Yes. Leave yes. in sorrow. Come leave on. with a sickness. Yeah. Amen. Ah. Amen. Lord, you want me to be in therapy and see this thorn mm. as a gift. Okay, it is illogical. It doesn't make sense. But I realize God does not want Paul to merely experience heaven because that may destroy his ministry on earth. Some of us, we so heavenly bound with no earthly good. We so on the way to heaven that we can't help nobody here on earth. I want you to understand that, 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 that in Mark 9, write it down, check it out on your own time. That's where we see the transformation of Jesus. Peter answers and says, Master, it's good for us to be here. Let us make three tabernacles, one for thee, one for Moses, one for Elijah. And Jesus rebukes him and says, no, you got work to do. Don't make now one man post in your Amen. Uh, amen. Amen. Or make it your tabernacle. Amen. He said, you got to leave here and go to work. Yeah, go to work. 
And in this theological presence, this thorn is to remind me that I have work to do. How do you say that, Pastor? Because the illogical presence, it inflicts pain. Where you, where you see it, it says in the flesh. Somebody is going through some pain right here and now. And you're wondering why, and it's because God is getting your attention. The thorn is sharp, it's spike instrument that pricks our flesh. God sometimes has to prick our flesh so he can give us more faith. Somebody knows that it wasn't until you realized you were catching hell that you realized you wanted to change and make your way to heaven. Somebody knows that it was at the pit of life that you began to see the promise of God. Somebody knows that I was so low that I couldn't fall any lower. And that's when I realized that God was real. I had to have some pain inflicted every once in a while for your children. Uh, yes, sir. For them to get the lesson. Yes, sir. You may not be able to whoop them because they're too old. Uh, but you got to let them go through some pain. Got to, got to, got to. They won't grow as long as you care. It's good when they babies like that. It's good when it's a Najee and a Johnny Z. We can carry them. But when they get to a certain age, uh, yes, you got to step back and realize they're not yours anyway. They belong to God. And you got to hope that you have trained up a child in the way in which they should go. So when they grow older, they won't depart. And if you didn't do it, here's the lesson. Let God train you and let them watch you take your training. Y'all y'all play too much. It's going to inflict some pain. Somebody said pain. No pain, no gain. I want to suggest the chaos moment for some of us is because we try to hold on to what God said, let go of. There are times I'm holding my children and it caused me pain. And God said, but you're the problem. He said, it ain't the child I'm trying to correct right now. I'm, I'm, I'm in Friday's lesson. He said, I'm trying to correct you. He said, how can I get to the child when you're in the way? Some of the whoopings we taking it's because we're in the way. If God is sovereign, get out the way. Amen. So epilepsy, malaria, migraine, headache, poor eyesight, all of the issues we have. About to stroke out. Because you won't let God step in. Say amen if you heard. There are some things you're not going to be able to change. Paul says, I got a thorn in my flesh. Oh, no. An illogical presence from God that inflicted me pain. And give, look what it says. The messenger of Satan to buffet me. Yeah. That means not only is it an illogical presence, it inflicts pain but it impedes progress. Yeah. The buffeting of Satan is being struck with many hands. It's like a boxer being in the ring with his hands tied behind himself. You're just taking a beating. And guess what? You're not a Timex watch. God didn't create you to take a licking and keep on ticking. God created you that you might have life and life more abundantly. Yeah. But until we learn how to deal with the thorn, this present from God, this pain from God, this stopping our progress by God, the messenger in the Greek, a jello. One who has been sent on a special mission. An angel dispatched with a very specific assignment. Paul is declaring that there was a demonic henchman that came after him. Yes, Paul was testifying before kings, preaching before governors, establishing churches. He's been pushing back the forces of hell. Satan is now on his track and strategically positioned. To cause him pain uh -huh. and suffer. Yeah. Child of God, because you've done a few things in the church, don't believe that there isn't an assignment. There is a hit out on you. And they want to inflict pain, want to impede your progress. 
and God has given them permission. There are times when I look at the church and say, where the folk at? And God say, I can't deal with them right now. I'm dealing with you. Y'all mad at me again. Sometimes you wonder where the deacons at. Don't worry about where they at. Ask God, where am I? What are you saying to me? Maybe God is saying you ain't ready for no help right now. You don't know how to appreciate folk enough. Y'all play too much. Because we act like we come to church with a clean slate. What you do when you repent, that means I make a decision to go in a different way. Well, if you're going to do the same thing, child of God, you're going to get the same result. The impeding of the progress. Okay, somebody up here right now, you, you, you have made, made it. Made it to Sunday. Yeah. But there's some waiting on you. Soon as you leave. All right. A Sunday afternoon beating. <laughs> then, when you get to Monday, go to your job. Got a Monday morning beating waiting on you. You get off work, get home. Got a home beating waiting on you. Tuesday beating, Wednesday beating, Thursday beating. I got any help in here? Friday beating. Seems like all I get Lord help us. Amen. Sometimes I wish Deacon Hart that there was a heavenly referee that would come and throw the flag for unnecessary roughness. Because it seems like I've been beat too many times and in too many places. There are times that I understand I got an illogical presence that inflicted pain and impeded my progress. But here's why God did it. Here it is, right here. I found it in the text. If your Bible open, I'll go to my next point. If you read this with me, where it says, Lest I should be exalted above measure. Yes. Say it with me. Lest I should be exalted above measure. Child of God, I can see here why the beatings were set up for me. They, they weren't to hinder me. They weren't correct. Amen. God wanted to correct me. There are times that my Bible shows up and says, if you spare a rod, you'll swallow the child. God has some corrections for our lives that unless he doesn't give them to us, we would be exalted, elevated, above useful. Somebody, you work so well in the church now because of what God has taken you through. Amen. You know it was God and God alone who has brought you there. And what he wanted to do was incarcerate my personality. God was checking in my personality. Yeah. He knew I was way too arrogant Come to on. pastor an uh, intimate church. Huh. He knew I was way too arrogant to love people that I didn't need anything oh. from. He knew I was way too arrogant to come here and serve him in the beauty of holiness. Oh. And he knows you too arrogant to do the thing that he assigned you to. So what he's doing, he's locking up our personality. Yes, sir. And giving us a present of pain and impeding our progress. Yeah. The thorn. The thorn. Watch this. This extreme situation. The thorn. Yes. Here's my second point. My thorn is enforcing my supplication. My thorn. When, when you see that, verse 8. For this thing I besought the Lord thrice, that it might depart from me. What is he saying? He said, my thorn taught me how to pray. Oh, somebody, somebody know what I'm saying. Yeah. Have you had any circumstances, situations that change you from cute prayer to real prayer? <laughs> Amen. 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 Let your child get in a situation that the doctor walk in with and look at you and look at the sheep and drop his head and you will learn how to pray. Yes. Get that tag put on your house to say you got 30 days. Yes, sir. Amen. 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 You will Paul says. That this extreme situation, that, 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 that my thorn, the extreme situation, my thorn is enforcing my supplication. Yes, yes. Watch this. Thorn, T-H-O-R-N. Yes. Do you wonder why it's spelled that way? 
Because your thorn is there to take you to his throne. When you catch that, run up here with you. When you catch that, run up here. If you got that, then you will be telling God thanks. That the thorn had a purpose, and it was to bring you to the throne. You know what the song say, take me to the king. Yes, sir. the king. Amen. The chaos of the thorn is to take me to the council of the throne. Give me a t-shirt with that. The chaos of the thorn is to take me to the council of the throne. Y'all yes, ain't getting it. Yeah. But y'all sitting here, it ain't that hot in here today. Y'all need to get this. Because you got some circumstances in your life, some situation yes, that you can't handle. Yes. And that's the thorn. Yes. And God said, I placed that there well, so it'll bring you to me. Yes. You think it's to push you away, but God says to bring you closer. Yes. So can't nobody remove that thorn. Mama can't take care of it. Daddy can't do it. Only God yeah. has the DNA to remove the thorn. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Paul turns the thorn yeah. into the throne. Yeah. He says, for this thing. And I'm glad he said this thing. Because if he gave it a name, it couldn't be oh. your thing. Yeah. So I want you to say it with me. This thing. Yeah. Some of y'all too mean to say. Yeah. Say this thing. Yeah. is going to take me to the throne. You made a covenant promise. Right. Now God will keep this part. Because okay. he says if you bring it to me, I'll take care of it. Yes, uh, 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 th th there is one thing that I have that makes me seek God. On a day-to-day -day basis. Yeah. And, and what he says, how you, the reason I had to uh, 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 do with you what I did, why I had to incarcerate your personality, is because I had to reinforce Second Chronicles 7. Because oh, yes, he says, if my people who are called by my name would humble them, he said I had to put real you in. Yeah, yeah. Some of y'all too haughty to pray. Oh, you, you got too much help to pray. You pray to the wrong people. Come on. Yeah. You, you, you think mama can do it, daddy can do it, your job can do it, your education. But God said, I'm, I'm, I'm incarcerating that. He said, I got dementia waiting on the most intelligent man. I got an old age waiting on the younger woman. You hear what I'm saying? God has something that's going to reel us in. And we have to learn how to trust in the Lord yeah. with all thy heart. And lead not to thy own understanding. In all thy ways. He's enforcing our prayer life. God wants you to have a better prayer life, child of God. When you get so sleepy <laughs> that you can't pray, remember you need a wake-up call. When you get so hungry, you can't ask God's blessing on the food. Remember all the contamination that went in it before you got it. It's time for the rhythmic, cute little church prayers to end. Yes, sir. I'm on my third point, but we on the way somewhere. Uh -huh. My thorn is an extreme situation. The pain, the suffering, the fact God gave it to me. Didn't check with me to see if I wanted it. <laughs> Didn't call me, ask me, could I have it? And sometimes we have resentments. Don't get holy on me. Even with God. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. When, when folk die, the first thing we say, ask God is why. Why? Why? Not thank you for the time I've had. Yeah. Lord, forgive me for the moments I miss. Yeah. Yes. Amen. The thorn is an extreme situation, scenario. My thorn is enforcing supplication. Yes. Yeah. When you get on the prayer line and you can't pray, sometimes God got to push the thorn in a little right. further. Yeah. So you still look too comfortable, Hodge. And don't let other people <laughs> have to suffer Lord. until you learn oh, how to go before the Lord yeah. in prayer. Yeah. My final point, and I'm on my way to a shower in the bed, <laughs> is my thorn. My thorn uh -huh. is exposing his sovereignty. 
Well, wow. all of what we talked about dealt with you. And God wants his portion of the message. My thorn exposes his son. Yeah. He tells Paul, I'm not going to give you what you're asking for. I'm going to give you me. They missed it. Yeah. The Lord is saying, I'm not going to give you what you're asking for. I'm going to give you me. Amen. They still didn't get it. Amen. The Lord said, I'm not going to give you what you're asking for. I'm going to give you me. So that would suggest I'm not asking God for him. I'm asking him for his stuff. I'm asking him for his grace, his mercy. I'm asking him for all of the gifts of life. I'm asking him for all of those things. Take care of this and take care of that. God said, I'm not giving you any of that. I'm giving you me. He says, my grace is sufficient for thee. For my strength is made perfect in your weakness. The Lord is telling Paul, I know that you can't explain me, but you can experience me. You didn't get it. God said, you can't explain me, but I'll give you the opportunity to experience me. Y'all still sit down. You don't want it. God said, you can't explain me, but I'll give you the opportunity to experience me. God said, you can't explain my goodness, but I'll give you the opportunity to experience Experience my goodness. God say you can't explain my grace, but I'll give you the opportunity to experience my grace. He said you can't explain why I love sinners, but I'll give you the opportunity to experience my love while you still sin. Y'all still not getting the promise of divine sufficiency. He says, and he said unto me, my grace. My grace, yeah. my amazing grace, yeah. it is it's sufficient, yeah. which means it's right here and it's right now. Yeah. I'm glad that I got a right now God, that his grace doesn't have to come because it is present. Yeah. You ought to know that he is a present help in times of trouble. Yeah. Anybody know that God will make a way? Anybody been stuck in an airport and God didn't let COVID creep up on them? The word sufficient means that it's unfailing, unyielding, and unrelenting. I'm glad when I tried to run that God was already ahead of me. When I tried to back up that God was already behind me. When I tried to go left and go right that God stood on my side. Yeah. I'm glad that God will yeah. make a way. Yeah. That he will show up yeah. for his people. Because yeah. he said, my grace yeah. is. Yeah. Aren't you glad that yeah. grace is? Yeah. Grace is what covers me. Yeah. Grace is what keeps me. Yeah. Grace is what wakes up my children yeah. when they don't even pray and talk to the yeah. Lord. Grace is what kept the gunman from coming in your house. Uh, grace is what God gave me when I didn't deserve. Grace. For my God shall supply all of your needs according to his riches in glory. Somebody ought to say amazing grace will always be my song. A praise. It don't sound like it. Say amazing grace. Will always be my song of praise. When I wasn't good, his grace, he kept me. I thank God for the sufficiency of grace. When mama couldn't feed us, and she bowed down to the earth, and she prayed. And God would deliver a way for our family to eat. His grace is. When daddy got sick and had to give up the ghost, and I didn't know what I was going to do, I'm glad that he said, My grace. I'm glad that when mama fell asleep and I couldn't call her name no more, God said, my grace, my grace, my grace is, I'm glad when I was a sinner destined to hell that he said, my grace, do you hear me, my grace, my grace, do you know it was
was grace. Yes. It was grace. It was grace. Say grace. grace. The church needs to know that you made it here today because of his grace. Yes. Don't sit down. Get comfortable up in here because it was grace that took you to bed. It was grace that watched over you. It was grace that woke you up this morning. Somebody said grace. The sufficiency of God's grace. A cup that never runs out. A cup that always is present for God's people. Yeah. But not only was it a promise of divine sufficiency, but verse 10 says, therefore, this is the hard part, I take pleasure in infirmities. I take pleasure in reproaches. I take pleasure in necessity. I take pleasure in persecution. I take pleasure my Lord. All right. In distress. Yeah, yeah. Why, hearts? For Christ's sake. Right. He, here it is. This is God's promise of divine yeah. sovereignty. He lets you know he's not just a God to give you sufficiency. He's a God that shows up with sovereignty. Yeah. He's a all-knowing God. He's a offering present God. Yeah. He's an almighty God. Yeah. He is the God of hosts, yeah. which means he has the armies of heaven yeah. to fight against the pits of hell for you. you Somebody ought to know that the Lord Jesus tells Paul that he's working out a divine sovereign plan uh -huh. in his life. I want you to understand and hear me well that God is working out a sovereign individual plan in your life. And you have a responsibility to that plan. Yeah. And, and what he tells Paul is you got to learn to deal with this storm. Yes. Because I gave it to you. Yeah. I got to learn to deal with DeAndre. Because y'all play too much. I, I'll make it transparent. Because God gave it to you. Got to learn to deal with Elandre. Yeah, yeah. Because God gave him to yeah. Got to learn to deal with Danielle. Because yeah. God gave her to yeah. Got to learn to deal with Anthony Jr. Because yeah. God gave him to yeah. but, but that's not the hard part. Yeah. I got to learn to deal with Anthony oh. Sr. Yeah. 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 Yes, sir. Because yes, God. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. Allow me yes, Lord. to give me yes, Lord. to him. Yeah. Yeah. He's working on it. Yeah. In the chaos of life, yeah. God is working on you. Yeah. It is, are you working with him? Lord. It is his sovereign plan yeah. that God wants you to live. He said, I came that you may have life. Yeah. In life more abundant. But it isn't the life that we see from the lifestyle of the rich and famous. Yeah, yeah. It is the life of the saint that has been settled and secured with the Lord. I want you to know, look, yeah. disciples, that, 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 that we are ordinary people yeah. trying to take an extraordinary step of faith. Yeah. And that's the reason God says, I use weak people to do strong things. First Corinthians, I give it to you in the Bible because y'all like to fact check me. It says, but God has chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. God has chosen the weak thing. Raise your hand if you know you weak. I'm not wicked, but I'm weak. He has chosen the weak things yeah. of the world to confound the mighty. The way we do that is we stand strong. Yeah. See, sometimes because you're going the long way, you think God took you the wrong way. But the truth is, he took you the strong way. Because the race is not given 
to the swift. Uh, come on, somebody. But he that endureth until the end. Somebody ought to say, I'm getting stronger by the day. I, I, I'm getting, the more I digest this word, the more I stay in the word, the more I stay in the word, the stronger I get. That's the reason he said, bread of heaven, feed me until I want no more. I need some folk that come to church to eat from the table of the Lord, and if it fall, I will crawl for the crumb. I ain't got no help up in here. I'm glad that God is still doing things. My thorn exposed his sovereignty. He tells Paul, I'm not going to give you what you're asking for. I'm going to give you me. And me for in the text is grace. That's G-R A. I'm out of here, y'all. Come on. G R A C E. That's God's righteousness at Christ's expense. I'm going home because I need a shower. I'm hot. I'm tired. I've been in church all week. I thank God for the revival and the revivalist. I thank him for all that he's doing. I thank God that I can see the chaos in the thorn that's going to take me to the throne. But I'm glad that the thorns are what I thought about as I got ready to leave here. Matthew 27, 29 said, and when they had planted a crown of thorns. They put it upon his head. I must say it again. When they planted a crown of thorns, they put it upon his head, a reed in his right hand, and bowed him at the knee before him, mocked him, saying, Hail to the king of the Jews. And Mark 15 and 7 said, And they clothed him with purple ribbon chair, and planted a crown of thorns, and put it upon his head. I'm glad that they put the thorns on his head, because the thorns took him to be to the throne. He is the king of kings, he is the Lord of lords. They weren't Friday on the hill called Calvary. They hung him high, they stretched him wide. For you and I, he dropped his head in the locks of his shoulders. And he died. I said he died. But he didn't stay dead. Because early Sunday morning, he got up with all power in his head. If you know he got power, say, thank God for the power. Because I know he got power that I too shall wear a crown one day. That is not just me, Paul said. He says, I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I, I, I kept the faith, Lord. And he says, therefore, laid up for me is a crown. But that crown won't have any thorns in it. That crown will be a crown of righteousness. For he says, for not me only, but for all of us who love him at his appearance, I shall.